In this little tutorial, I'm going to show you how to refactor a class component in React that has state and refactor it into hooks instead. Actually, I'm not using class components anymore, but the fact is that there's a lot of code bases out there that probably will have classes in them and state in classes and stuff like that. So it's good to know how you can refactor them into hooks instead. So I created this small little application where I get some data from the Punk API, I found this actually, and it's a quite fun little API where you can get information about all the beers from Brewdog Brewery. Brewery, yeah, hard for me to say. All right, so so that's what I'm using here, and this is the application. I'm using the default styling from Create React App, so there's nothing fancy going on. There's actually not much styling at all, but that's not the point with this tutorial. So I have a list of beers here that I grabbed from that API. All right, so this is uh, what we're going to work with. So I'm going to go inside of the code editor, and I also provided a link down below the video where you can download this application if you want to follow along. And on that link, there's also the hook version. So follow along if you want, or just watch me do this magic when I convert this component into a functional component with hooks. So the structure on the application is as usual. We have the index and then we have the app.js file. And this is the only component for this tutorial. And then I'll use the default styling. I tweaked it a little bit here. The only thing that I've done here, yeah. So that's it really. And I have the image, I have the logo for the Brewdog Brewery. And that's the image here. So let's get started. I'm gonna remove this sidebar. If we look at the app component here, you can see that I have some state. I'm grabbing from the API and I put all the beers in the state here. And I have this function. It's an async function because I'm grabbing from the API. So that's an async operation. So first I await the fetch. And then if you have followed along in my tutorials, I probably explained this a lot of times now. I awaited the second time. And that's because I converted to JSON and that one is also async. So that's why I have two awaits. And here are the endpoints for the API. There's no API key or anything like that. You can just grab it with this URL. And then when I grabbed all the beers, I set the state here and I have this property that's called beer. And initially it's an empty array. That's really important. Otherwise it will give an error here when we map through the beers on initial render. So that's why I'm setting it to an empty array. Then I'm using the lifecycle method here that's called component did mount. And this one will run when the component mount. So inside of this one, I just invoke this one here and that one will grab the beers from the API. And then I have the logo, I have a little header and then I map through all the data here and I have a div for each beer and it look like this. So a really small and simple application, but it's showing some core functionality with React and that is how you set up a state in a class component and also how you can grab data from an API and run this function from component did mount when the component mounts. So there's a lot of learning here if you don't know this stuff already. This is in my point, the old way of doing it. Now we can have state in functional components thanks to hooks. So we're gonna refactor this one into hooks now instead. And the first thing we're gonna do here is to remove this here. And instead, we're going to import two hooks, one that's called use state and one that's called use effect. So this one is for having state in a functional component and the use effect is something you can probably compare it to the lifecycle methods, but it's really not fair to compare it exactly because they work in completely different ways. But the use effect hook is the one we're going to use to trigger the fetch on initial mount. All right, the rest can be the same here. This one is a class now. We're gonna create a const. I use arrow functions because I like that. You can use a regular function if you want to do that. So I have a const app equals and an arrow function like this. State, we cannot have this anymore because this is a class property. Now we're gonna have a const that we destructure out the state. I'm gonna call it beer. You can call it whatever you want. And then we have the setter for the state, set beer equals, and then we call the use state hook, and I'm going to set it to an empty array initially. So this is how you create a state in a functional component. When you call the use state hook, it will return an array with two values. The first value is going to be the state itself, and the second value is going to be the setter. 
So that's what we just structure out here, and we can name them to whatever we want. And the great thing with functional components and use state is that you can separate the states out. You can have multiple states in your component if you want to have that. In this case, we just have one. But in the class component, you just have one state, so you have to have your state object and have different properties and stuff like that. The get beer method is not a method anymore, it's a function. So we add const to that one and we can use it almost as it is. We don't set the state like this anymore. So we're going to set the state with our set beer setter and we give it the beer like this. All right. Component did mount. We don't have lifecycle methods anymore. So we're going to replace this with the use effect instead. Use effect. Like this. And inside of there, we call get beer, not bear, beer. Something like this. And in the use effect, we need to have something that's called a dependency array. And this is an array here that we can specify different dependencies when we want this use effect to trigger. If we have an empty dependency array, that means that it will only run once on mount. So we're going to leave it empty because we just want to fetch the data on initial mount. And this one, as it is now, will work the exact same way as the component did mount. All right, we don't have a random method in this one because it's a functional component, so I remove that. And we don't destructure out the state anymore like this. I'm going to do some auto formatting. We do have the return statement, and this one can look the same here, actually. So I think this should be it. I'm going to save the file, go back to the browser. And you can see that it's still working. So that means that I've successfully refactored this one into a functional component with hooks instead. And I think this is a much cleaner API. We got less code and I think it's more readable. So I love functional components and the use state and the use effect hook. All right, I hope you learned something here. And if you like my tutorials, please subscribe and support my channel. I will put up a lot of stuff like this in my channel. And as always, see you in another one.